Well, good morning. Good morning, Cornerstone Church. It is so good to see everyone here this morning. We want to welcome all of those of you who are in-house with us and those who are uh, joining us online. We are here today to celebrate uh, the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Natalia is going to bring a few announcements and a scripture in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to ask if Paul Hackett would come with our offering. We want to remind you folks that there are several ways to give here at Cornerstone. We do not take an offering in the middle of service. The offering baskets are out on our collection tables or our welcome tables uh, at each entrance of the door before service. You can also leave an offering in the boxes, in the lock boxes at the back. Uh, or you can, they're right on the back of your chairs, there are several other ways that you can give electronically. And so if you would like to avail yourself of any of those means, you are certainly more than welcome. We uh, encourage a spirit of generosity. We're going to talk about time, talent, and treasure a little bit today. And uh, to launch us into that vein of thought, we have our giving scripture today, which is Matthew 25, 34 through 40. Then the king, who is Jesus, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. It's important to remember that as the church, we are not a social club here for one another. But we are the hands of Jesus extended into the world to meet those who are struggling and who are walking in darkness. The book of Isaiah says that the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. That light is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ passed that light onto his church. And he said, you are the light of the world. Amen? And we shine that light by being generous with what we have to give. Let's bow together and pray for a spirit of generosity upon our own hearts. Father God, we give you glory and honor and praise today for you are here with us and we recognize the presence of your Holy Spirit among us. It is in your name we gather today and we pray, Father, as we bring the first fruits of our giving to you this morning, we pray that you would bless the giver and the gift of this offering. But beyond that, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts to receive a generous spirit, that we would learn as a people to give of our time, talent, and treasure with gladness of heart, knowing that it is in that that we become the light of the world and people who are walking in darkness will see the great light of Jesus. Lord, use us in this way, we pray. And all God's children said, amen, amen. and amen. Natalia? will be having a back to school welcome par pizza party where they welcome the new incoming students. Lastly, we have come alongside the Winchenden CAC and GFA for their annual backpacks or school supply drive. You'll find a list of the needed items out on the table in the foyer underneath the map. All the items are needed by next Sunday the 20th. And if you have any questions, you can see Carrie Hackett or me. 
please stand for the reading of the word. We'll be reading Ephesians 6, 13 to 18. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having prepared everything, take your stand. Stand, therefore, with the truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness of the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for fully equipping us to overcome the world, the flesh, the devil with such wonderful pieces of armor. Father God, I pray that we take up the full armor of God today, that we walk in spirit and in truth, being clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Lord, I pray that every person in this room receives the power from above to stand fast and firm against the forces of this world. Father God, help us to recognize the battle for what it really is, a tool the enemy uses to trap us and make us forget whose we are. Remind us, Lord, that when we cling to the promises of the one who loves us wholly and best, victory is ours because victory is already yours. Father God, I pray that you incline our hearts to your testimony. Open our eyes to see the wonderful things in all that you do. Unite our hearts to fear your name and satisfy us with your steadfast love. In the victorious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's just begin to worship him. And God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. Yeah, yeah. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will I will love you, God. Yeah. Oh, we love you this morning. You're beautiful. You're glorious. Let's sing, God, I look. And God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. To see things like you do. And God, I look to you. 
You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, and I will love, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield, and I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all my days, I will love you, God. And we're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns. And hallelujah, our God reigns. And hallelujah, our God reigns forever all my days. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you this morning. You're so good, God. Oh, we love you. We lift our eyes to you. I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from you and you alone. Oh, I lift my eyes up to the hills where does my help come from it comes from you and you alone oh i lift my eyes up to the hills where does my help come from it comes from you and you alone and our god reigns forever and God reigns forever and ever. Our God reigns forever and ever. Our God reigns forever and ever. And I will love, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will And I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all my days. Hallelujah, love you, God. I will love, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I. all my days I will love you God oh let's just lift up our voices to the Lord sing in the spirit sing your own words Lord with strength my great defender I look to you God I look to you God over and over again, we come to encounter I you. Lift my eyes to over and over again, for He is my strength, He is my fortress, oh, you're He is, He is my all in all. So, so I will look upon You, Lord. I will. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. Over and over again. We're going to sing that again. I lift my eyes. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. 
I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again, over and over again. We lift our eyes to the beauty of the Lord. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again, over and over again. We lift our eyes, cause I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again. 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 Because I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again over and over again over and over again Over and over I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know your head is white as wool. I know that your voice it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. And Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Because I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. Cause I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over again. Let's just take a moment. Just let this worship just wash over you. Let's just gaze on him. Oh. 
right now, Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the Father. He's glorious. He's beautiful. And even though many of us have a hard time encountering that, seeing that, again and they cry out holy holy because there's something beautiful there's something fascinating about jesus and it revives them over again and they cry holy again and again and again upon you I'm gonna look upon you with them I'm gonna join with heaven cause I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over and over again I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord over over again, over and over again. Oh. We lift our eyes, cause I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again, I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again, I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again. Over again. Make it your prayer. Lift your eyes to God. Cause I lift my eyes Our to the beauty of you. the Lord. Over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again. I lift my eyes to the beauty of the Lord. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. You were the word in the beginning, the one with God, the Lord most high.
My sin was great, your love was greater. And what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. And what a wonderful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. or before you, you silence the bones of sin and grave the heavens are roaring with the praise of your glory and for you are raised to life again and you have no rival you have no now and forever, God, you reign. And yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name. Jesus Christ, my King, what a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, and death could not hold, could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the voice of sin and rain, and the heavens are roaring with the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, and you have no rival, you have no equal, and now and for kingdom and yours is the glory and yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king and what a powerful name it is and nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus powerful name it is the name of jesus
power to sing, and power to heal. Sing it out, church. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And power to sing, and power to heal. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Power to save and power to heal. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Power to save and power to heal. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We're going to sing. We're going to sing that. Uh, that tag again, that, that line again. And if you need a healing this morning, I want you to come down to these altars and begin to claim your healing. I want you to begin to abide in Jesus. The word says, if you abide in him and his words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. If you need a healing this morning, if you need a healing this morning, Ray, could you get, Raymond, could you get my anointing oil out of my pack? In the front, in the uh, front pocket, very front pocket, top. Yes, yes. Jesus, Jesus. If you need a healing touch this morning, if you need a healing touch, come right up to these altars. Jesus. Cause there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Power to save. Here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come around, and I'm going to anoint you. If, you're, if you want to be anointed, I'm going to ask you to move right up to the edge of the altar so I can reach you with the anointing oil. I'm going to ask Ray to come right behind me. I'm going to ask people to gather behind, behind. And I'm going to anoint with oil this morning as a symbol, sign of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to believe that supernatural healing is about to happen right here in this place. Amen. If you believe it, I want you to claim it, claim it, claim it. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, begin to pray all across this room. Begin to pray all across this room for healing to be released in the mighty name of Jesus. For in the mighty name of Jesus, there's power to save and power to heal. We believe healing virtue, healing virtue, healing virtue. Numbness and pain being gone, being gone, being gone, being gone, being gone, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the work of the cross. Oh, come and raise up faith for belief, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for the cross, for the finished work you've done. Thank you that you love to heal. A simple prayer of faith will do. 
You were a God who healed then. You are the same yesterday, today, forevermore. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. You're a God of healing, so come heal us. To the beauty of the Lord. You're a God of healing, come heal us. Oh, come, Lord. Come do what you love to do. Spirit, we give you permission. Break in with healing. Break in with healing, freedom deliverance all we have to do is wait on you lord and you do the work god come and change lives come and transform hearts heal cancer heal sickness right now lord we ask bring healing body mind spirit Take away every pain, every fear, every anxiety, Lord. Every pain, because we believe you are the healer. Yes, you are. Pour out your exceeding greatness, God. Pour out all the fullness of God. The fullness of God that your church would experience your greatness oh the same power that raised Christ from the dead is here today the same power that raised him the same power he used to heal you have given today come and do it Lord for more we say thank you thank you for that need that's getting touched right now oh and we ask for more restoration reconciliation sickness bring restoration of the Lord the very power the very power you used to change lives for breakthrough, breakthrough, send your healing, send your healing, we ask for breakthrough, breakthrough, send your healing, send your healing, God, we ask for Ask for breakthrough. Send your healing. Send your healing. God, we ask for breakthrough. We ask you breakthrough. Send your healing. Send your healing. God, we ask for breakthrough. breakthrough. Send your healing, send your healing.
send your healing we ask for breakthrough send your healing send your breakthrough holy spirit holy spirit we ask across this room across this room that you would move god we ask come and move holy spirit holy spirit bring about the breakthrough bring about healing bring about restoration we ask that people would be set free that you would come redeem that we'd be free to walk with you that we'd be free to walk with you healing power father god holy spirit healing power come and move in 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 healing power break in break in power come and move in healing power come and move in healing power come and move in healing power break in break in come and move in healing power come and move in healing power come and move in healing power break in break in come and move in healing power come and move in healing power come and move healing power break in break in Come and move in healing power. Come and move in healing power. Come and move in healing power. Break in, break in, oh God. Father, today we bring you glory and honor and praise for what you are doing in our midst. We have been praying for the increase of healing power at our altars. And today, Lord, we pray that that prayer would begin to be answered. Lord, there is no power in our own hands to heal. All healing comes from you, God. We just get to be the channels through which your healing glory flows. And we pray, Lord, that as we study together, we would learn how to be better channels of your blessing, how to flow the glory and the power of our God into the lives of others, that we may see their lives impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we as a people believe that you took the stripes upon your back so that we might walk in health. Lord Jesus, it is that we seek. It's that we ask for. And we pray, Lord God, that you would heal our congregation and heal our land, body, soul, mind, and spirit. Let us be the light and the salt that you want us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> The glory of the Lord is thick in this place today, amen? I think you said that before service, Bob. You said, you said to me, this is going to be a service. At this moment, I want to uh, dismiss our children for Children's Church. So if you have a child that's going down to nursery or we worship or kids' church, you can... See them to Pastor Amanda and her team out this north doorway. And uh, I believe there's a new pickup location as well. 
that you parents should know about. I don't know where it is, though. <laughs> Carrie, do you know? No, 101. Room 101. Pick your children up in room 101. I knew, I knew somebody would know it. I'm all fogged up here. I can't see a thing. <laughs> You're sweating a little bit. That's what happens, Patrick, when the glory comes out. Yeah. I have a towel there, Ray. Could I borrow that? Right on you, at the back of my chair. Thank you. You've been working hard today, brother. <laughs> all right. So, as I was in worship this morning, the Lord showed me some things that I want to impart to you. This is not my sermon, so don't start the timer on me just yet, okay? I was in praise and worship, and I saw threads of glory begin to flow into this place. White glory, like ribbons flowing out of the ceiling and up out of the ground into God's people, filling their hearts. And Lord said to me, he said, in the beginning, I poured my glory into this world. And there is an immeasurable amount of glory that remains here. But most of humanity is cut off from that glory because of the power of sin. The glory hasn't left. The glory's, the glory's not gone, but my people are separated. Humanity is separated from the glory by the power of sin. And one of the things I died to do, Jesus said to me, was I died on the cross and rose from the dead to restore the connection to that immeasurable amount of glory. And for those who have accepted me, who have asked me into their heart as Lord and Savior, that connection is restored. The glory yeah. is restored. And that glory can be drawn on at any time. And then he began to remind me of the lessons we've learned as a congregation through the prophetic word. This is why abiding in Christ is so important. Yeah. Because even though the glory is reconnected, even though we're reconnected to that glory through the cross, death, and resurrection of Jesus, many people can't draw on that glory. Many of the songs this morning were about the beauty of the Lord and the healing power of the Lord. Why is it we can't connect? Because you need faith to connect. And faith only comes by abiding. Jesus said in John 15, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you, then you can ask whatever you will. You see, it takes abiding to receive the word that God has for you. Don't bother asking for something you have not abided in Christ to receive. If you haven't spent time abiding in Christ to find out what God is doing in your situation, don't bother praying your will over the situation. You probably don't have it right. Whatever it is that you're seeking from God, until you've abode, abided, abidden in Christ, until you've received his word about that situation, you can't ask whatever you will. You can ask all kinds of things, but they may not be what God wants. Once you have his word, faith is implanted in your heart. And out of that place of faith, you can draw on the glory to accomplish what it is God has revealed to you he wants to do. The glory is present with us. The power is here. It's in the name of Jesus. But that name of Jesus will only be used to build his kingdom and bring glory to his name according to his plan and his purpose for your life. We prayed at this altar today for a lot of different things. I pray that one thing would have been established in every single individual, the desire to abide in Christ until you receive a word. It's not about what I want. Notice I didn't pray in English over, I maybe said a few English words over a few of you. I prayed almost entirely in tongues over every individual I laid hands on. 
There was a reason for that. Because I believe the Spirit knows. The Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings too deep for our understanding. That's Romans. And so I prayed in the Spirit because I don't know what God wants for every one of you, but God knows what he wants for every one of you. And he will reveal it to you if you abide in him. Do you have his word? If you don't have his word, keep seeking it until he reveals it. What is it God wants to do? That's the secret to answered prayer. Find out what it is God wants to do. Don't assume he wants to do what you want him to do. Find out what he wants to do and then change your will accordingly. Mm. Even Jesus said, I never do anything. The son only does what he sees the father doing. If Jesus, the son of God, only did what he saw the father doing, how much more should you do only what you see the father doing? Somebody say amen. amen. That was not the sermon. That's just a word for you to take to the bank. Okay. We're in the book of Revelation. We're in the book of Revelation chapter 3. If you want to turn there, we're going to be dealing with the church of Philadelphia today as we continue into our study. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to bring you a quick word. So we'll be in the church of Philadelphia, Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 7. And uh, we'll get there in just a few moments. I just wanted to bring you a quick parking lot update before we launch into our Bible study. So we've had some movement on the parking lot this week. We got the contract from the paving company that finally came in. I have signed it. It is back off to the paving company. And tomorrow, Betty Knowlton and I will be going out at 11 a.m. to sign the uh, paperwork with the bank that is going to give us the money so that we can pay the paving company. So you can be in prayer with us about that at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, that everything goes according to plan. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is our update for now. I will bring you more information as it becomes available. So we've been doing this uh, study called Jesus Doing Life Part 2. And we are doing today Jesus Doing Life Part 2, Part 8. And if I was going to give a title or a name to this message, it would be the mission. And we've been studying how Jesus did life with people since January. And in January, we started a series called Jesus Doing Life Part One, which is about how Jesus did life the first time he came to earth. He was born as a little baby in a manger. You all know the Christmas story, right? It doesn't involve Santa Claus, not until about the year three or four hundred. And, uh, he was kind of a thief. I don't know if he was a good guy or a bad guy. Just kind of is how it worked. Um, but anyway, Santa Claus is not the main story of Christmas. It's Jesus. And Jesus came the first time. And uh, Jesus came the first time. And he did life with people like he's told us to do life. And we studied that. Um, and we learned that the first time Jesus came, he came as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. The reason we can gather here in church today is because Jesus has taken away our sin by the power of his cross, death, and resurrection. We are reconnected to the glory. We learned that Jesus did that by doing life together with his disciples and with the world and ultimately with us. The first time he came. We are still living in the New Testament. We are still existing in a continuing story of the Gospels. But the Bible says that Jesus didn't just come one time. It teaches us in the book of Revelation, and this is a study through the book of Revelation, that he is coming again. And I believe in a literal return of Jesus, that Jesus is going to return to the earth in bodily form. We're going to learn about that. You sang, you sang about it this morning in that song. Patrick sang it this morning. And didn't he sing it well? He sang that song, I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your hair is as white as wool. I know that your voice is like many waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. The second time he comes, that's how he's coming. The Bible said he will wear a robe. He'll be riding a white horse. 
and his robe will be dipped in blood. Gross. But the second time he comes, he's not coming as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's already come that way. He's already done that work. He has to finish his second job, which is as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the judge of all the earth who will do right, and the soon and coming king. Somebody say amen. amen. So we're learning what it's going to be like when Jesus comes again. In all of this learning that we're doing and going to do over the next several months, we need to remember that God does not change. Amen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And love is still God's way today, and it is still his command. I don't care what any politician tells you. We are to love, love, love. Say, I am to love. That's the command that your king gave you. Yes. A new commandment I give you, Jesus said. Love one another as I have loved you. Whew. It's a tall order. We learned that the book of Revelation is going to show us how Jesus comes again as the judge of all the earth who does right. And we also learned that in the beginning of the time of judgment, which has already begun, by the way, started the day Jesus took his feet off the planet and ascended to the right hand of God the Father, where he right now is making intercession for us. But in chapters 2 and 3, which are about the present time, we learned that seven letters are written to seven churches. And those seven letters are written to specific churches. They are written to the church of Ephesus, to the church of Smyrna, to the church of Pergamum, to the church of Thyatira, to the church of Sardis, to the church of Philadelphia, to the church of Laodicea. And as Jesus wrote to those churches, he was by extension writing to all of us. Because if you look into these uh, letters in chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation, you can see yourself and you can see our church in little bits and pieces. And we are called to hold these letters up before our eyes as a mirror to see what is it that Jesus would commend me and our church for and what is it he would rebuke us for. And for those things that Jesus is patting us on the back for, we need to do more of that. And for those things that Jesus is saying, yuck, blucky, yuck, blucky, Right? It's a new word. That's going to be the YouTube channel, right, Trinity? Jesus says yuck blucky. I can see it. For those things that Jesus does not like, we need to eliminate those things. So over the course of the last eight, nine, ten weeks, I guess it's ten at this point, we have learned that Jesus is going to judge within the church the religious spirit of works versus relationship. We have learned that the church must embrace and expect suffering. We have learned that we must be purified in our hearts and behavior. We have learned that we must surrender control of our lives, relationships, and circumstances to the Lord. And we have learned up to this point that we need to have more than a reputation for life. We need to cultivate real Jesus life and guard it. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I was thinking about these uh, five things that Jesus had talked to us about as, as things that he is judging the church for, the Lord said to me, remember that I, I, I'm not telling the church to do something in its own power, but I am providing all the power and the glory that is necessary. It's not that I want to judge the church for things it's doing wrong. I want to bless the church by getting them on the right road, and I'm giving you the power to do that. So let's rephrase these things. While we learned that Jesus has judged within the church the religious spirit of works versus relationship, Jesus has given us the power and the opportunity to know him. Not just to know about him, but to actually know him on an intimate level. As we worshiped here this morning, Jesus was extending to us an invitation to know him. He wants to reveal himself to you in a personal, intimate way as Abba, Father. We have learned not only that we must expect and embrace suffering. Many of you are going through heavy trials right now. 
Jesus is going to give you power not only to go through those trials, but to rejoice in them. Amen. To bless the Lord in the midst of your trial. We have learned that we must be purified, but Jesus is not expecting you to purify yourself. He is providing all the power necessary for you to walk in righteousness. He is Jehovah Tzidkenu, the God who is my righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have learned that we must surrender control of our lives. And he has empowered us to be able to turn those thorny, nasty, scary situations over to him and just say, Jesus, this is yours. And we can be at peace and learn contentment in the middle of our circumstances. He gives us all the power that's necessary to do that. And we have learned that he has given us the power to live true life. Hmm. Do you know that he has made you to be highly effective? And it's not by practicing seven human habits. Listen, I'm all for the seven habits of highly effective people. I did the class, I took the class, I argued with people over the class. <laughs> I've worked that out. I recognize that the power to live any atomic habits, highly effective habits, good habits, are all flowing from the throne of Jesus. I practice them by his power. Jesus has given us everything we need for life and godliness, Peter says. Somebody say amen. That's good news. That's good news. I'm not doing this in my own power. I'm drawing on the power and the glory that Jesus released into the universe at the very beginning. And as I abide in him and his word comes to abide in me, all that he has said to me. Ray Parker keeps sending out this word. There's a blessing for those who read aloud this word and hear this word and obey this word. That's what the book of Revelation says. Do you know that the book of Revelation is the only book in the New Testament that says those who read it will be and obey it will be blessed? There is, a, there is a promise of a blessing on your life if you obey these things that we are studying. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's launch in. To the church in Philadelphia. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. Okay, full stop. Now I could preach a message just on that sentence. I'm not gonna. If you want it, you make it up. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut, cornerstone. Yes. I know that you have little strength, cornerstone. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Somebody bless God. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Since you have kept... That was a boring hallelujah, everybody. <laughs> hallelujah. Wow, you need a nap. <laughs> amen. Somebody said amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I love naps. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. We're going to get more into that in chapter 4, 5, 6, and so on. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Him that overcometh will I make, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Everyone. Him that overcometh will I make, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will ride upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God. Okay. That's a song from back in the 1980s. 
Some of you will remember, that's where it came from. It comes from these verses in Revelation chapter 3. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right, so a few thoughts on this passage of Scripture. And again, there are probably a couple hundred thoughts I could share on this. I'm going to share just a few, okay? Okay. And if I miss anything, don't worry about it. You just, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You write it down and you take it home to be with him in your private time. He has provided Cornerstone an open door that no one can shut for the moment. The only one who's going to shut our doors is Jesus himself. And I am here to tell you that there is coming a day when the door will close. He's opened a door for us But this door is not open forever. Oh, Pastor Jay, that's not fair. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's fair. No one ever said God was fair. God is just. He's given us an open door. And we have to walk through the current open doors. I want to share with you, each of you got a piece of paper on your chair here. These are current open doors in our community which some of our DLT groups are taking advantage of. Now, I'm not saying these are the only doors, but these are definite open doors where we have an opportunity as a congregation to walk through. If you've got your own open door, then take your own open door. I have no bones with you about that. But don't say God has not provided you any opportunity to have an open door of mission. He's given you one. Your DLT group knows about these things. If you want to be involved with the CAC, we had a group of people out yesterday at the uh, Winchenstock. I was going to wear my specially tie-dyed T-shirt today. I had, I had Trinity make me a tie-dyed T-shirt yesterday. She said, Pastor Jay, don't you want to make it on your own? I said, get my hands all dirty. No, 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 you go right ahead. So she did. She made me a tie-dye shirt. It was a CAC fundraiser, this Winchin stock was. So I went down, and there, uh, Pastor Amanda and her team, there was a great team of people working there. They uh, were doing the tie-dye table, building relationship with people in the CAC, the community, other people, Natalia and Carrie and Paul and other people from our community were there. It was wonderful. It was a great day just to build relationship. I was walking across the, uh, across the top of the uh, Ingleside Winston and Community Park there overlooking the uh, amphitheater, and a guy from behind me said, is that you, Joe Lilly? And I turned around, and it was a guy who I went to school with. I hadn't seen him. It was uh, Jody Clapp. It was Billy Bowler. I hadn't seen him. He said, you haven't changed at all. I said, you're blind. <laughs> but I sat down for about 20 minutes with Bill, and I, and I chatted with him. And while we were there, Carrie found Bill Gallup, who was running sound for the event. And he came up, and he chatted with us. We had a time just to build relationship and to renew old ties. Turns out that Bill Bowler is related to one of the ladies who works and helps run the CAC. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing time of connection. God was doing some great things. He's, this is what Open Door is about. Remember, I'm not, I'm not talking, as we talk about sharing Jesus with our community, I'm not talking about going into the community or sit and setting up a flat bug bed truck with a guitar and singing a bunch of Jesus songs and then having somebody preach at people. I'm talking about doing life together with our community first and then out of that sharing the love of Jesus with them. We must walk through the current open doors and we have open doors. Our community is opening to us. And if you'd like to know more about the open doors, you can look at the people on those lists and contact them. There is an opportunity there for people to meet Jesus. They will meet him through us knowing him and knowing them. You see, we have a relationship with Jesus, and we're building relationship with people who don't know Jesus. And it works the same way with him as it works with, with you when you have two friends who have never met each other. You have a friendship with Jesus, and you have a friendship with this guy or gal over here. And then when you all three show up at the same place, you say, oh, have you met my friend, Jesus? 
And you know, in the middle of a relationship, you're talking with somebody, and Jesus always, at one point or another, will show up. And you can be the type of friend who, when Jesus shows up, you can be like, nice to see you, Jesus. And so anyway, blah, 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 and you can talk to your other friend and ignore Jesus. And Jesus will then walk away, just like your other, you've all done this. Every one of us has done this. Two friends who don't know each other show up at the same place in the same time, and you pay attention to one friend and ignore the other. And then that friend eventually says, well, I guess they don't want to. And so they just walk away. You know what I'm talking about, right? We've all done that, and then we've all felt guilty, and then we all need to apologize to that friend that we, dis that we just dissed. Well, we do the same thing with Jesus. Jesus will show up, and then we're like, yeah. I'll talk to you later, Jesus. Just go over there and get a lemonade. I got to talk to this guy first. No, Jesus showed up so you could introduce these two friends of yours. They will meet him through us knowing him and through us knowing them. That's how this is going to work. Don't be surprised when you're in the middle of talking to your friend who does not know Jesus, and suddenly Jesus shows up in the middle of your conversation. That's your opportunity to share him. Amen? But there is more than just opportunities. There are also trials that come with this open door. Peter, James, they all say it. Don't be surprised by the fiery trial that you must endure for a short time. There are trials in beyond the open door that are going to come. Don't be shocked when you start walking through the open door that Jesus gives you and trials show up. They are there to perfect your faith, according to the Apostle James and the Apostle Peter. Whenever a trial shows up beyond your open door, it's just there to perfect your faith. Don't be upset by it. Rejoice in it. We must endure them. We must walk through them. On the other side of this trial, there's an old song. On the other side of this trial, you'll be a better man or a better woman. Trials are trials, sometimes they're just trials of inconvenience. Can I share with you that building the kingdom is not about making things work out your way or making life easier for you. When we gave our lives to Jesus, he, he did not sign a contract that said, I'm going to make life super easy for you. Has anybody ever noticed that? Jesus never promised you that your life would be easy. He promised that your life would be filled with glory if you embraced the hard. There will be trials of inconvenience, trials where you have to put what you want to the side and stop trying to make things work out your way and stop trying to make life easier for you and just follow God's way. How many of you believe God answers prayer? Amen. Now, how many of you have prayed something prayed for something, and it got worse. And how many of you then went to God and said, God, what are you doing? It, it's getting worse instead of better. And how many of you thought, oh, this is how God's going to answer my prayer? Right? What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know he's near? Mm. What if God answers your prayer by taking you down the pathway of suffering? There will be trials of personal sacrifice. Can I tell you, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he must take up his cross how often? Once? Daily. Yeah, daily. We look at that word and we just pack gloss right over it. How often do you have to take up your cross? Daily. How often is that? Daily. Well, really? Why do we expect something different? You know, 
Your open door is going to require of you a personal sacrifice of at least three things. Might be more, but I'm going to give you three things you're going to have to sacrifice if you're going to walk through your open door. Your time. Your time is not your own. You don't get to plan how God calls you or where God calls you to. Your talent. God is going to put you in situations where he's going to call talent out of you you didn't even know you had, and you're going to need to step up to that plate and do it. And he's going to call for your treasure. There are going to be moments where God is going to say, I want you not to buy that camper. Mm. Or I want you not to go to Dunkin' Donuts anymore so that you can give. I want you not to go to Starbucks anymore so you can go to. (laughs) If I keep going, I'm going to get an uh uh-oh out of everybody in this room. (laughs) Listen, there are things that God is is calling us to that are just, uh, they are going to be personal sacrifices. And then those aren't even the trials of actual persecution. You know, God is going to put us in in situations where we are actually persecuted. And you know what we get to do when we're persecuted? Nothing. Praise the Lord. That's that's about it. Why why does he send us? Pastor Jay, I'm an American. I have my rights. (laughs) Somebody persecutes persecutes me, I'm going to persecute them right back. Yeah, because that's what Jesus did. That's, that's exactly how Jesus acted, isn't it? As soon as he was persecuted, he just rose right up and smacked those suckers in the head. Jesus was always suing people. Why do we think Jesus is calling us to something different than he did? In fact, he said, I'm not calling you to anything other than what I am doing. If they persecute me, of course they will persecute you. Don't be shocked by it. And don't react differently than I do to it. Why does he put us through trials of inconvenience, trials of personal sacrifice, and trials of persecution? Because he's trying to perfect your personality. Can I tell you, folks... If you go to heaven with the personality you got right now, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Jesus is working something out in your personality, and he's going to use trials to do it. Because all of our personalities, when we're born, we're not born with good personalities. We're, our personalities are a gift from God, but they're broke, just like everything else in this world. And you hang, around, you, you hang around long enough, everybody's going to see the flaws in your personality. They might not see the flaws in their personality, but they'll see the flaws in yours. <laughs> Only Jesus sees the flaws in everybody's personality, and he uses trials to perfect those personalities so that when we get to heaven, we've got heavenly personalities, not something else. He's also perfecting your gifts. He's given you great gifts. And he's calling them out through trials. Your gifts are anointings. They're oil. And oil only comes out of the olive when it's pressed. And he's perfecting your faith. As we go through trials, we're forced into that abiding space. Every one of us has been given a measure of faith, Paul the Apostle says. And that faith is being pushed into your life through the space of abiding. If you abide in him, then faith will be downloaded into your life, and out of that faith, you will walk out your personal miracles. Your trials are directly connected to your level of faith. I want to say this to you. There will always be a synagogue of Satan to stand against the work of God. There was in the days of the Philadelphians, and there is today. There's always going to be a synagogue of Satan to stand against God's work. Those folks are not our problem. They're not even our issue to deal with. We don't have to deal with the synagogue of Satan. They are the Lord's task. We've got to stop trying to do God's job for him. Those who stand with us, the Bible says, are more than those who stand against us. I want to share with you a story from the Bible. Listen, 
as a church, I'm going to encourage us all to get to know the stories of the Bible. We need these stories, Old and New Testament, because they're very important. So in the Old Testament, there was this prophet. His name was Elisha, and he was a man who worked in the power of God. And there was a king of Aram, and he was at war. Aram was, another, was a nation in the Middle East near Israel, and they were at war with Israel. And Elisha was a prophet to Israel. Now, he didn't often see eye to eye with the king of Israel, but when Aram went to war against Israel, Elisha fell down on their side by the anointing of the Lord. And so in verse, uh, in, uh, let me get to the end of the, 2 Kings chapter 6, starting in verse 8, the Bible says this, Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. So the man of God, Elisha, sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha would warn the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This really made the king of Aram mad. So he summoned his officers and demanded of them, so tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? Who's the mole? None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet, is in Israel. And he tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Well, go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord. What shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city, but come and follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria right into the capital of the king of Israel. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and there they were inside the city of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked, Elijah, shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill those you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stopped raiding ter Israel's territory. You see, Elisha didn't do anything. He left the enemies of God to God. It's the same with us. Our job is not to stand against our enemies. We must acknowledge that we have them. Elisha did. But they were God's problem to deal with in whatever way he saw fit. So what's our job? You see, we can't do our job if we're trying to do God's job. So we need to do, leave God, God's job to him, and we've got to do our job. What's our job? Well, we've got to hold to our mission and the harvest it produces. What are we called to do? We must do life together. We must reach the lost, send the found, that's us, into the community, discover our gifts, and change the world. We do this by continuing to do life with each other, and we do this by finding our outreach. Every one of us, every DLT group, this year is going to be focusing on outreach. We've got to build relationship with our community. We've got to begin to reach into our communities and do the work that God has called us to do. If we don't, when Jesus comes back, will he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or will he say, your works are all burned up? Find our outreach. 
today as we conclude, I just want to ask the question, who is God sending you to that does not know him? You see, this is, I, it, we, I said it at the beginning, we aren't here as a social club. We spent the last year and a half, two years, learning to do life with each other. When we first began, we were really bad at that. But that was the first step. We've learned how to love each other. There is so much love in this church. Now, there's still some little things. But God's working on those. But we are learning to love each other. But that's not the end. That's not the end goal. That's only a piece of it. They will, they will know we are Christians by our love. So that had to be first. We have to actually love each other. We had to be a place where people actually want to go to be, feel loved. People don't want to come into a church where everybody's like, <laughs> some of you are laughing, but we, we had a bunch of Archie Bunkers in this church. <laughs> Pastor Jay, that's horrible. How could you say that? Some of you came to me and said, I love Jesus. I just don't love people. A lot of you said that. I love Jesus, I just don't love people. Well, that's not biblical. <laughs> Jesus said, if you say you love me, but you hate your brother, you lie. My children always used to sing a song to me when I lied. Revelation, Revelation, 21.8, 21.8. Liars go to hell, liars go to hell. Burn, 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 burn. <laughs> if you say you love God and you hate your brother, you lie. And now you know what the end of all liars is. It's the lake of fire. Stop your lying. Learn to love. Is that simple enough? Is that too bold? Oh, good. But we've learned how to do that over the last couple of years. Now we must show them that we are Christians by our love. And the only way we can do that is if we connect with them. You need to, who is it? Who is your friend that does not yet know Jesus, that Jesus is trying to show up in your life so that you can introduce the two of them? If you don't have that person, if you don't have those people, then your job is not done. You are like the church of Sardis that we studied last week. I know your works, that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Strengthen what remains, because I have found your works unfinished in my sight. Our works are unfinished. If we all don't have that person that Jesus is trying to reach through us, then our works are unfinished. Will you be like the church of Sardis and remain there, or will you move to the church of Philadelphia and complete your mission? Who is your person? This morning, I want to ask you, we're going to just turn on some music. And if you don't have your person, I'm going to ask you to recommit to the mission of DLT for this year. And I'm going to ask you to begin to abide in Christ, even starting today, right at these altars, and begin to ask God for your person. Would you put some music on there, Troy? Would you all stand with me? And if you can honestly say, Lord, uh, I don't know who my person is right now. I don't know who it is you're sending me to. 
then would you come down to these altars and begin to ask him to give you your person? Even as we're playing this, this music, it's not going to get any more exciting than this. I'm just gonna, we're just going to close our eyes. And if you need to ask God for your person or your people or where you're supposed to be doing your outreach. And it, listen, it's not even just about the outreach. Oh, you know, I'm doing my job because I go to the CAC every week. Or I'm doing my job because I go to the library every week. Yeah, but who's your person? Because if there's not a person connected to you through the library or through the CAC, then you haven't done your job. You haven't even begun your job. It's about a person. It's not about a program. So who's your person? I'm going to open these altars, and if you need to ask God for your person. And listen, this doesn't work just for adults, you know, people between the ages of 21 and 973. This is about everyone in this room, everyone who's here right now, and even down to our little children who are meeting downstairs with Pastor Amanda. Who's their person? Who's your person? Come now and ask God to give you your person. We're going to pray together in just a moment, but I'm going to give you a moment to say, God, do I need a person? Do I have my person? And if not, come to these altars. to ask God for your person right where you are. There are people seeking God at this altar. The rest of you have your person. You know what? That's really exciting. Now I want you to begin those of you who already have your person. These people are praying for a person, that God would reveal their person. You have your person. Now I want you to begin to lift up your voice and begin to pray for your person. Begin to call out their names. Begin to call them out for salvation. Who is your person? Begin to pray for that person right now and begin to ask God to give you their life, to give you a witness. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, don't let me do it alone. Begin to call out. Call out to Jesus. Give me. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you know. You know who our people are. You know the people that you've burdened us with. And right now we begin to call out their names. We begin to call them forward into salvation. Jesus, we know that no one can come, can come to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws them. So Holy Spirit, we ask you right now to begin to draw our people to you. We're believing for their salvation. They don't know you right now. They're away from you. If the rapture were to happen today, they would not go in the rapture. They'd be left behind in the time of the tribulation. They'd be left behind with all the disasters that are going to come upon this world. Lord, we don't want that for them. You've burdened our hearts with them. Lord, cause us change our hearts until we weep for the lost that you've burdened us with. Oh, burden us even further, Holy Spirit, and use us, if you can, to draw them sovereignly into your kingdom. Jesus, Jesus, love them through us. Love them through us and give us opportunity. Give us opportunity. Give us opportunity to touch them with the power of your Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to begin to pray with the Spirit and with understanding for that soul, that lost one, that one who does not know Jesus yet. Lord Jesus, help us to see them like you see them. 
Lord, your, your heart breaks. Your heart breaks for them. You have so much more for them, and they aren't entering into the fullness of your glory. Lord, let them enter. Cause them to enter. Use us to compel them to come into the great wedding banquet of the Lamb. Lord Jesus, use us. You send us out to the highways and the hedges. Send me out to the highways and the hedges. Use me to connect people and invite them into the kingdom. Oh, build relationships between me and people in this, in this town, in this region, that will build their faith and draw them into the kingdom because you love, you love, you love people passionately. You desire, Lord, let my heart break for the lost. Let my heart break for those who do not know you. Jesus, show me, show me what it means for somebody to be without you. Show me and let my heart break for those who do not yet know you. Give me a passion. Give me a passion for the people. Give me a passion for the people you're sending me to. Now I want you to take a step of commitment that you're going to build the kind of relationship with the person God has given you. It's not just about praying for them. It's about building a relationship. You're not just praying them into the kingdom. You're going to be building a relationship with them that enables you to share Jesus with them. So I want you to begin to ask Jesus for that relationship with those people. Jesus, give us the divine connection. We would not stop at just praying for these dear souls. We would not stop at just talking to you about them. We would ask you to give us relationships that earn us the privilege and the connection to speak into their lives and bring them closer to you. We ask you to give us connection to these people that can flow, that you can flow through and introduce yourself to them. Jesus, connect us. Connect us. Don't let us be satisfied just to pray in a closet for them. But let us pray and connect. Give us the kind of relationship that can reveal, that you can be revealed to them through. Give us the healthy relationship, the connected relationship, the love relationship through which your love can flow so that they will know we are Christians by our love. Help them to see it. Help them to experience it through us and through our connection to them. Now you ask, you ask Jesus to give you this connection. Lord, we thank you for the open door that you've given us as a congregation. We realize that no man can shut it, but we know according to your word that there will come a time when the door is shut. Lord, help us to make the most of the time we have. Lord, when we walk through the open doors, cause us to walk through the open doors. And when we walk through the open doors and we face trials of many kinds. Help us not to give up because of the trials. Help us be will- make us willing to walk in places even if they are inconvenient. Help us to walk through the open door even when it costs us time, talent, and treasure, energy, strength. 
and help us to walk through the open door even when the enemy persecutes us, when people rise up against us. Help us not to worry about that, but help us to especially love those who rise up against us. Help us to pray for our enemies and love those who despitefully use us. Help us to realize that out of that pressing comes the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit that will draw your people, the ones whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the world was ever made into the kingdom. Give us a harvest, God. Give us a harvest of souls. Build your church, not so that we gain a reputation in the world, but so that you, Lord Jesus, can be glorified. We give ourselves to you as the body of Christ. Lord, I love your people. This is such a wonderful group of people. And I feel your love for them. And I know that you have incredible plans to prosper and to bless them. I release that blessing into their lives today. And I pray that they would be opened up to receive those blessings. I pray, God, that you would cause them to see the glory of the Lord while they are in the land of the living. Let us experience that goodness together. And let us be able to testify to it, love one another in it, and shine that light into the world so that they in their darkness can see and respond and come to the light. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I pray, Lord God, that as our people go about their days, that you would give them traveling mercies. Let your virtue be upon them. Let your strength be within them. And let the power of the Holy Spirit lead them forward. For your plan, your kingdom, and your purposes. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray these things. And all God's children said, Amen. <laughs> before, we, before we depart, um, just very quickly, uh, Brother Ed Makarowski, who uh, was the oldest member of our congregation, went to be with the Lord several weeks ago. His service is next Saturday morning here at the church. His memorial service is Saturday here at the church at 10 a.m. if anybody would like to attend. All right. God bless you and be at peace.